Funding for this program is provided by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of the complete line of Cajun King seafood seasoning mixes and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. And by the Dairy Farmers of Louisiana. When you want good programming, just add milk. Chef John Falls welcoming you to the bayous of South Louisiana. Today, Cajun and Creole cooking holds a prime spot in the world of international cuisine, and I would love for you to know a little bit about it. So why not sit back, relax, and join me and some of my friends as we cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Everybody and welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, and I know you can tell from all of these clarinets and saxophones and trumpets that today we're going to talk about music. Not just music, but music coupled with food in the city of New Orleans. Yeah, we're talking about the jazz brunch and all of the great foods associated with it. You know, jazz originated in the city of New Orleans, and whenever anyone thinks of New Orleans, they have to think of that great jazz music. Like this, here we are looking at some of those jazz musicians in the French Quarter. I guess this is around Jackson Square on a Sunday afternoon. You know, how can you possibly think of the city and not think of Louis Armstrong, Jelly Roll Martin, King Oliver, and the great trombone of Jack Teagarden playing all over the city in the early days? But what about today? Al Hurt, my good friend Pete Fountain. Needless to say, jazz is known worldwide. Here we're looking at Royal Street. I think Royal Street was actually the home of jazz in New Orleans with its great backdrop of St. Louis Cathedral. Any Sunday afternoon, people can sit in St. Louis Cathedral levee and watch the great riverboats just paddle right under the great Mississippi River Bridge, eating a little beignets and coffee somewhere in the French Quarter. Everybody who can pick up a banjo or pick up a fiddle or pick up a clarinet or any instrument will find a right park bench just to sit on and entertain anyone passing by just a couple cents in the hat, or maybe a dollar or so. This might be a little young Jelly Roll Martin right here. Oh, yes, the home of jazz, the city of New Orleans. How many people have come to the city not only to experience the great foods of New Orleans, but also its great, great music? Well, that's just some of the scenes in and around the French Quarter. But what about the jazz brunch? You know, a French nobleman wrote in his notes or his journal many, many years ago that he had visited the city for about, oh, a month or so, and he loved eggs, and every single day, the chef fixed him an egg dish that was totally different from the one before. 30 days, 30 different egg dishes. He also wrote that when he'd go into the courtyard to eat his breakfast every morning, there was a sound of music just permeating the whole hotel quarters, the whole French quarters of the city, and he said he thought only in paradise one could eat his meal and be surrounded by the great sounds of music. Well, that's the city of New Orleans. Where did the jazz brunch originate? How many people have just traveled miles to get to the city just to experience the jazz brunch? Well, there's a lot of stories, a lot of legends. But I think the real story is that in about 1880, a wonderful lady by the name of Madame Biguet founded a little restaurant in the quarter and all of the merchants going into the French Quarter to sell their goods about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning would get very hungry around 10 o'clock. They had put in a full day already, and they were looking for a nice, hearty, substantial meal. So what they would do would be walk right down the street, get into a nice warm chair at Madame Beguet's, and bite into some of these great egg dishes and fish dishes that we're going to prepare today. Of course, who hadn't been to the Hilton Hotel Jazz Brunch. Who hadn't been to uh, Brennan's, world famous, or of course, Commander's Palace. And we're gonna do a couple of dishes from those restaurants today. The first dish that I wanna do for you is a very famous dish in the city. There's a thousand variations to this egg dish. I'm gonna do Eggs Dominic Yu. Dominic Yu was a great pirate in the band of Jean Lafitte. 
And we're going to do another dish later on that's also attributed to Dominic Yu. Visiting with me just a little bit later is one of the greatest musicians in Louisiana, Dr. Isaac Greggs, and he is director of bands at Southern University. And Dr. Greggs has traveled all over the world bringing the great sound of Louisiana music with the chefs of Louisiana as they've gone out and brought our, the great tourism story of the state of Louisiana. He's going to come out. We're going to talk music, food, and everything else just a little bit later. But first, let's do some brunch items. First of all, of course, poached eggs. I told you a minute ago that that French nobleman said he had 30 different egg dishes in 30 days. He was right. So I'm going to put three eggs poaching in this little egg poacher right here. Very simple to do. I've got a little water uh, in the bottom of this pan, and I'm going to crack the eggs right down into it. Of course, this is one of the non-stick, one of these non-stick little pans. It ought to work just perfect. I'm going to put these in. It'll take just about three or four minutes to poach these eggs perfectly. I'll put the top on it. Here's my beautiful egg bowl. Look at these old brown eggs. I just love them. Move this out of the way here. Now, for the eggs, Dominic, you, I've got to saute a meat of Louisiana as well as one of the fresh vegetables. Again, you know, I've told you a thousand times that in Louisiana we're always combining flavors, doing all kind of interesting things in the pot. The egg dish is no different. I'm going to begin by putting just a little bit of a buttery flavored oil down into my old black iron skillet. And I'm going to put a tomato slice, because normally you can broil it or you can bake it. But I'm going to saute it down into the pan. And then some tasso. And I'll tell you a little bit about tasso. It's a very spicy meat. In fact, I have some right here. It's a very spicy meat that's coated all over the outside with garlics and peppers and all of that. But then we slice it nicely, and we use it in all kind of different dishes in Louisiana. So I'll put this out of the way. And while the uh, tomato and the tasso is sauteing, we have to make a sauce. Now, this dish is topped with one of the most famous sauces of New Orleans, Marchand de Vin, the wine merchant sauce. And again, we're going to begin to make the wine merchant sauce, my Chant de Vin. This sauce was invented uh, actually by, uh, by uh, Antoine's restaurant many, many years ago using the great uh, Bordeaux wines. And we're going to put a little butter, as we just did, and then all of the seasonings of New Orleans, a little garlic, a little green onions, because again, a nice flavorful dish, a little red bell pepper, Imagine a sauce going over eggs with all of these different ingredients in it. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Fresh chopped mushrooms into the wine merchant sauce. And then a little bit ground or chopped ham because they were looking for that smoke flavor in this particular dish. So I'm going to saute all of these mushrooms and green onions and garlic and all of these wonderful smoked flavors into the saute pan for just a second while the tomato is sauteing over here, and my eggs are poaching. I've got a lot of things working on this stove today, but I can tell you what, only for the jazz brunch would you find this many flavors all combining into one pot. Now what I'll do is put in my wine. Now I'm going to use a little port. Of course, you could use any dry wine. This is going to be a little sweet here today, but I'm going to put a little touch of the wine merchant into the saute pan. and. I'll let the wine reduce. In fact, is I'll pick my flame up just a little bit, and I'll let the wine reduce for a minute before I add into it my other main ingredient. Of course, I have to turn the tasso here. You want to just get it nice and warm. The tasso is already cooked, so you don't need to worry about cooking it too much. And of course, you know that we can eat tomatoes raw, so no need to have much worry about that either. The wine is reducing nicely. And into this, to complete the sauce, I'm going to add a little bit veal stock, demi glace, whatever you want to call it. You can go into the store and buy beef consomme or beef broth in the cans. Get about two cans and reduce it all the way down to one. You may want to tighten it with a little flour roux if you'd like. But you have a concentrated beef flavor. Now, think about that for a minute. Beef flavor tomatoes, smoked meats, all of those things on top of eggs. Well, 
Well, I tell you, that's the flavor of New Orleans, the flavor of the jazz brunch. And I'm going to continue to stir this around. There's a couple great egg dishes in New Orleans that kind of follow the same taste patterns as this. Of course, one is Eggs Toussard, the great dish created by Commander's Palace. I, I always think of Eggs Sardou, the great poached egg dish put inside of artichoke bottoms on a plate of cream spinach. And that dish was named after Victorin Sardou, the great old French playwright. And he, a dish was created for him right in the city of New Orleans. Look how nice all of this is coming together. Now, how's our eggs doing? Oh, look at here. Just absolutely perfect. Now we have to plate it up. I have to show you how this is going to look. Now, you could put the egg on top of a grits patty. You could put it on top of uh, what? Any kind of muffin, English muffin, Holland rusk, anything you would like. I'm using French bread because, after all, this is the city of New Orleans. I'm going to put on to that the little tomato. I'm going to put a couple pieces of the tasso. I can get it all working here. You come on here, you drop a little piece of tasso right on top. And, of course, the poached egg. Well, this is going to be really warm. And we want to get that egg out of there, but it ought to come right out. And we're going to put it on top of the dish, just like that. You stay up there. Now, of course, the wine merchant sauce. We have to put the wine merchant sauce right on top of the egg. And can you imagine all of these flavors coming together? Look at this dish. Just absolutely magnificent using poached eggs as the main base. No wonder that French nobleman was so excited about the dishes of New Orleans using eggs once he had a chance to taste them. So I'm going to decorate this. And then, of course, We'll put it right out of the way as we go to our other dish, a dish created at Commander's Palace, a dish that we refer to as filet of trout St. Charles. Now, I need to move all of this out of the way so we can find some room to cook. Move all of this. I'm going to actually take another black iron skillet and fire it up, get some good hot heat under here. You know, there's another tradition in Louisiana that says that the brunch actually originated because of the fact that on Sunday, now this is an interesting story, I, I, and I don't know, I may even believe this story. It says that because all of us were Catholic, we couldn't eat anything after midnight because we had to go to Mass and receive communion the next morning. So we would come out of church starving to death, and there were always ladies standing right there waiting to sell us some little rice cakes that I guess they called Calais. But the more affluent passed by those old rice cakes and ran to the great restaurants to eat breakfast. They were starving to death. It was 10 o'clock in the morning, and it was so full of festivities that they really wanted some music and everything else involved in the brunch. And that's how the jazz brunch originated. Who knows? That's a great story. I think I like that a little bit better than Madame Begay's. But anyway, we're going to pan saute a little piece of trout. This dish is Trout St. Charles, named after great St. Charles Avenue, a very, very simple dish to do. I'm going to take the fish and put it in a little light egg wash, and then I'm going to dip it in flour. Very simple dish to do. It's, you, you're going to season it with whatever seasonings you would like and dust off all of the excess because I'm going to pan saute this fish right down into that nice hot skillet. I can raise that fire up just a little bit. And when you saute a dish, you want to remember that you're not going to deep fry it. You're not going to put it in so much oil that it's just floating. You want to keep half of the fish out of the saute pan, as I'm sure you may be able to get a good shot of here. You want to keep half of the fish out of the, out of the oil and brown the bottom nicely. And then as we flip it over, the cooked portion will then be out of the saute pan. And uh, it'll keep the inside of the fish very, very moist, but the outside very crispy. Normally what we'll do is to take the fish right after it's browned on one side and we'll go ahead and put it right into the oven and, and, and I guess crisp it up just a little bit more. Just really, really fine, great dishes created in the city of New Orleans for jazz brunch. While my fish is sauteing, I want to show you a couple other dishes associated with the jazz brunch of New Orleans. Here we have, I want you to really look at this in this beautiful old blue crock bowl. 
This is called grillage, and the raw ingredient for this dish is, of course, we have uh, pork. We have This is cubed pork. We have mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, and regular mushrooms, all slowly braised in a black iron pot until all the flavors come together, and this dish would always be served over right here. Cheese garlic grits. Now, you know, grits, you, you say, gee, who would eat grits? Well, in the city of New Orleans, we love grits, but we're not going to just take grits. We have to put garlic into it. We have to put chopped ham, undoing maybe, and of course, uh, cheese on top to give it just an additional flavor. I want you to watch as I flip this nice little piece of kraut. Oh, let me flip that over a little better than that. Come on, come on over here. Okay. Look how nice and brown that is, and you'll notice that the, the cooked portion of the fish is now out of the saute pan, so we won't actually have that thing overcooking, that piece of fish overcooking. Okay, I'll move this out of the way, and then look at here. We saw people eating beignets at Café du Monde in the city of New Orleans. I want you to take a look at that big platter of beignets. These are the little... Uh, donuts that's fried. I'm gonna boy, look at this confectioner's sugar just cover. Who could resist a couple of these hot beignets with a cup of cafe au lait in the morning in the French Quarter of New Orleans? Just a wonderful, wonderful dish. Okay, we'll move this out of the way and I'll finish my trout St. Charles. I'll move it here and I'll get my plate ready. I got a great little plate here. Now put the fish onto the center of the plate, and you've got to watch this. This is going to be really nice. I'm going to make a little sauce with hollandaise. I've taken some hollandaise, and I'm going to put a little tomato sauce down into it. I'm going to put a little bit Creole mustard, just like that, and a little Louisiana hot sauce, just a couple little drops, and I'm going to stir that up. This is going to be a Creole Chiron sauce. Chiron is any hollandaise mixed with tomato, but we're going to flavor it with Creole mustard also. And then I'll get my poached eggs. I have to put a couple. Can you imagine poached eggs on top of fish? Well, that's what we've got. Get one out of there. Come on, let's just put it right on top of the fish. What about two of them? I've got two here. This is a big eater. Put them right there. And then we're going to top it with the Chiron sauce right on top. Now this is a fish dish for breakfast as part of the jazz brunch in the city of New Orleans. Look at this, I'm put a little color onto it just like that, a little bit more purple. Just a beautiful, beautiful New Orleans dish. Okay, well, let me tell you what we're gonna have to do now. I mentioned that Dominic Yu was gonna give us another dish that we were gonna work with today, but I need a little help from my good friend, Dr. Isaac Gregg from Southern University. And I know he's here. Come on. Hey, Doc, how you doing? How you doing? Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to visit with us today. I have to tell all of my friends out here that this guy has traveled all over the world bringing Louisiana cooking, and you're always with a great Louisiana chef. How do you get those good jobs? Because that is one of the things that Louisiana features. Good food and good music. <laughs> that is world known. And you can't separate the two, can you? No way. I want no to way. talk to you about all of those travels, but I want you to help me do something while we're, uh, while we're talking about it. Okay. I want to make a dish that's so famous in New Orleans on Sunday jazz brunches. It's called Café Brulot, the burnt coffee of New Orleans. Not burnt coffee, burnt sugar in the coffee. So I'm going to get this Brulot bowl okay. right here. Look at this old bowl. Now, the Brulot bowl is any bowl that's made out of all copper. Why don't you just hold right, that for me while I light this up. Any bowl that's made out of copper or silver, no home in the city of New Orleans would be without a great Brulot bowl. And we're going to go ahead and light that up. I know it's good and hot. And get the little Brulot bowl uh, simmering here. And what's going to go into this bowl is a little brandy. huh? That makes it pretty. <laughs> and we have to heat up the brandy. And we're going to put a little bit rum. Now, there's a lot of recipes for this, I'm sure, just as there are many versions of uh, uh, what, what's some of the Burma great Street. jazz. What's some of the great Burma jazz Street, songs? Way down in New Orleans. <laughs> way down, different as versions. many versions of that song of is versions of this right. dish right here. Into this dish, we'll always put a little cinnamon stick. 
and we'll put a couple little cloves and we'll let this come to a boil. It doesn't take very long at all to boil, but uh, it's a real tradition. Dominic Yu in the late 1700s founded this dish because he had, let's say, acquired some nice mugs off of a ship as a pirate, and he wanted a nice dish to make, uh, to drink those cups, in those cups, so he created Café Brulot. Let's talk a little bit about jazz. Why is music so important in the culture of Louisiana? When we think of Louisiana, we think of North Louisiana with its bluegrass. We think of Cajun music in the triangle. We think of blues and jazz. Why does everything in Louisiana have to be surrounded by music? Because everything you do is surrounded by music. For the mere fact of the rhythm, you see, music can make you cry. Music can make you happy. And in my instance, in my case, I can think of many times that music has lifted a defeat into a victory. Is that and that has done it Great. many times. So consequently, music is very important into the life of every Louisiana. How would one define jazz? You know, I mean, we've heard the music, we know the sound. When I think of jazz, I think of tapping my foot and I think of snapping my fingers. I get excited when I think about jazz. But how would you define jazz to someone who's never heard it? I think the only way I can possibly define jazz is say that uh, it's music with a feeling. It's music that is played from the heart and not from the book. It's a music that you have to feel it more than anything else. And uh, for an example, if you go to a funeral, you hear music. If you go to a football game, you hear music. If you go to a dance, you hear music. Music can make you feel any way you want to feel. And this is one of the assets that we have in good jazz music, which was created in the state of Louisiana. So jazz, we can forget about all of the arguments the other states have about, well, we created jazz or some, how did jazz then get all over the country? I mean, it's traveled everywhere. Everybody, some states even lay claim to jazz. How, how do you think it left the city of New Orleans and, and made its way all over? You see, there was one gentleman came along. His name was Armstrong. I think Louis Armstrong did more for the state of Louisiana and jazz than any Secretary of State we could possibly have. Because every traveler that I've been to, every individual there knows about Louis Armstrong. And you listen to the records, you listen to the, listen to the TV, you listen to the uh, radio, you're gonna hear Louisiana type jazz. And so, how I'm saying is this, Armstrong carried it everywhere. Well, you know, talking about Armstrong carrying it everywhere, you're right, but I know for a fact that Dr. Isaac Greggs has carried it everywhere also. You have traveled all over the world bringing Louisiana's great music, and as director of bands of one of the largest bands in the country at Southern University, you have brought that stage band and yourself to continents everywhere. I know you've been yeah. to Moscow. Yeah. What, what's what's the uh, some of the greatest experiences you've had? Just, just give me one good experience bringing Louisiana music. Let me tell you, I was in, uh, I think, Moscow. I was performing in Moscow, and after the performance was over, well, we sit around and we have the same thing you Coffee do in Brulo, Brulo, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just have some cabinet. And there was some uh, Russian musicians there. And uh, finally, they started taking out the instruments and start playing. And so they want me to join. And the only thing that really amazes, amazed me was they were able to play all, I'll give you an example, Basin Street, Bourbon Street, way down yonder in New Orleans, going up uh, or down by the riverside. You should hear that, hear a, a Russian singing it in his version of English <laughs> down by the river. It's funny. <laughs> well, you know, but when... they're doing it because, you see, the best thing about music is universal. I don't care where you go and what country you go to. A in the treble clef is in the second space. So we know if I have no problem. <laughs> it's always the always same. The same always place. the same, always different. Right. You know, when I was in Moscow myself, I, when I opened the restaurant there, I brought a Cajun band with me, and it was amazing to see how the Soviet musicians walked up on stage and instantly started to play the Cajun music. I guess it's all from the heart and soul, and when you yes, love it, it comes very, very easily. Well, talking about coming easily, our brandy and rum and, oh, what's it, what else is in here? Cloves and it's little cinnamon delicious. stick is starting to boil here. So what I'm going to do, I want you to get that big old fork over there. See that big old fork? And I want you to... Go right in here and get that lemon peel and orange peel. Just go ahead. That looks like a band director's baton to me. Huh? Ah, <laughs> and, and what I'm going to do, I want to flame this. Now, I want you to watch, to, to, to watch out here because I'm going to see if I can get a little fire yeah. here going. There you go. I think I may have. Yeah, there we go. Now, you go ahead and wand that 
orange peel right in that flame. Isn't that great? And, and what happened, the juices of the orange peel and the lemon actually fall into the brulot and flavor it with the cinnamon and cloves. Just a great, great barn coffee taste. And here I have, I want to show you this while this is varnished. This is an old uh, uh, sugar cutter from the 1800s. The ladies of the house would take sugar and put it in little cubes and crack it because sugar would come in long, big square pieces, and they would break it right into the brulo pot. And I was fortunate enough to find this old sugar chipper somewhere in the city in New Orleans, and I'll keep it with me at all times when I make brulo. Okay, Great. now, that's good. We can move that out of the way, and I want you to get that coffee pot for me over there because the secret to coffee brulo is once the brandy comes to a barn, you have to pour the coffee right into the brulo bowl. Go ahead and pour it on in. Pour it in all From the way. From me with there. love. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's great. That's enough, right? Ah. We don't, we don't want to dilute it too much, you know? <laughs> we are together. Now, you can put okay. that coffee right down there because I'm going to tell you, I have one of the great pedestal cups of Dominique Yu, the great pirate of Jean Lafitte. Great. And look, great. let me give you a little sip of this brulot so you can tell me whether it was any good or not. This is a nice little brulot ladle. Now, of course, you could put sugar or anything else down into it, but... I'll tell you, I think I'll just take a little taste of it just Delicious. like it is. So how is it? Delicious. Delicious. Mm. Now, orange or anything else would just flavor this nicely. Doctor, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming and visiting with us and helping me with the Brulo. The pleasure and, was mine. And sharing all of the great stories of jazz. And I want to welcome each of you to come back next time and visit as we do more Brulo and create more taste of Louisiana. Good to have you. Good to have you, too. It was yeah, very good at the Funding for this program was provided by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. And by the Dairy Farmers of Louisiana. Fresh ideas in cooking begin with milk.